Are there times when you want to fund a Roth IRA, but you actually can't? Well, what are those circumstances? I'll tell you. And then how do you fix it if you accidentally make a contribution? I've got that more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. Love the Roth IRA. Hope you do as well. Hope this is, hope you're using that tool, this versatile tool, to help you achieve your financial goals. The thing that we love about the Roth IRA is your contributions, while they don't benefit you on your taxes today, all of that growth in your Roth IRA is sheltered from tax. And then if you meet certain criteria, you've had a Roth IRA for at least five years and you're age 59 and a half, all that growth comes out tax-free. Now, this is a great idea if you are young and therefore there's lots of time for this tax-free growth. Two, you think tax rates are gonna be higher out there in the future, new taxes will be created, or you're in a low tax bracket today. Benefit Roth, benefit Roth. And then three, if you believe that the markets will continue to grow and there will be a lot of growth potential, you're gonna want that growth to be tax-free. Deciding between pre-tax or Roth, this is a this is a quintessential financial planning decision. Even though we talk a lot about the merits, the benefits of the Roth IRA, how versatile it is, it's not a one size fits all. There are certainly times and circumstances, many of them, when it's gonna make more sense to contribute pre-tax and get that tax deduction, deferring the tax so that you pay it out there in the future when you're in a lower rate. But having tax diversification or in times, like I just mentioned, where it's better to have that tax-free growth Love the Roth, love the Roth IRA. Now there are a couple of times when you might want to contribute to a Roth, but you're not allowed. And guys, we've seen, we serve thousands of people in doing comprehensive financial planning, looking at all six areas of their financial life. That's, that's important, I'll explain in a moment. And, and there are times when someone new comes in and we look and say, oh, y you actually can't be contributing to a Roth IRA and you have been, here's why you can't, and here's how to fix it. So there's two primary times when you might want to fund a Roth IRA, but, but you can't, you're not allowed. The IRS rules, you're not allowed to do it. The first is when your modified adjusted gross income, which is your adjusted gross income with a little bit of tweak to it, uh, modified adjusted gross income is too much. If your income goes above a certain threshold, a certain level, then you're actually not able to make a Roth IRA contribution. I wish this was simple, but it's not. And here's why it's not. First, it's modified adjusted gross income. So that's not, it's not like you can just say, well, if, you, if your wages are above this, and it's not even just, especially if you're married, that, well, if your income's above this. No, it's your entire household's modified adjusted gross income. So it's your wages, it's your interest income, it's your dividends, it's capital gains, it's, it's sale of, uh, of, of other properties, it's business income, it's your spouse's income, it's, it's everything wrapped together okay, that you've got to look at for this modified adjusted gross income. And then the second reason why it's difficult, this threshold changes every, every single year. And so it's not where you can just say, okay, if it's above 150, I'm, I just know that that's the number. No, it's not. It's, it's bizarre numbers and they change every single year. For 2024, for a married couple filing jointly, your modified adjusted gross income needs to be below 230,000 in order for you to contribute to a Roth IRA. And, and if it's more than that, then you can do a little bit. It's phased out is what they call it. But by the time you get to 240,000, which again, that's, that's just $10,000 difference there, um, then you can't do any Roth IRA contribution. If you're single, that threshold's 146,000. And again, you get a little bit of a bigger runway, but at 146,000, you're limited on how much you can do to a Roth. And shortly thereafter, you're not allowed to do, to do any. So if your overall income is a little bit, is above that, you can't do a Roth. And so if you get a bonus, or if you have some investments outside of tax sheltered accounts that you, you sell because they had a big gain or, or something like that, you might not realize, oh, my adjusted gross income just went above these levels and I, I already funded a Roth IRA and I actually can't. We've seen this most common with folks that are contributing monthly or on an ongoing basis automatically to their Roth IRA, but they haven't looked at it for several years. They're doing their own taxes, so they're not aware of these rules and their income has been going up either from bonuses or new jobs or whatever, and they just aren't connecting the dots that, oh, my income's gone up and I'm still contributing to a Roth, but I'm not able to do that. That's the first time when when you might wanna to contribute to a Roth, but you're not allowed. The second time is the opposite. 
and that is you don't have any earned income. And believe it or not, we get this question all the time early in retirement, or I've got a child who's just starting their career, the contribution limit for a Roth IRA, same for an IRA, by the way, is up to 100% of your earned income or seven grand, whichever is lower. And if you're age 50 or older, then you can do an extra thousand. That's the contribution limit. Most people don't don't, don't think of it as, as that, well, 100% of your earned income, they just think about, well, seven grand, that's, that's the limit. I can put seven grand into, if I've got income, I can put seven grand. No, it's gotta be earned income, it's gotta be paycheck money. And so the first few years of retirement, um, often people are just in that mode, maybe you've got some dollars that have built up in a, in a, in a you know, cash or, or non, uh, retirement account, maybe you receive an inheritance and you're looking at, well, I'm, I'm fun in my Roth, so I want to keep doing that. But you don't have any earned income. That's a time as well that you're not allowed to contribute to the Roth IRA. This is earned income. This isn't total income. So if you have Social Security income, still can't contribute to a Roth. If you've got pension income, if you've got capital gains, note that all of those other income sources factor into that modified adjusted gross income but they don't factor into this earned income requirement. So, so that's a second time when you can't fund a Roth IRA. What if you do? What if you actually fall in one of those circumstances, but you're not aware of this and you actually do contribute to a Roth? I guess, can you, or do they lock you down? No, you can. You, you can put the money, they, you can contribute to the Roth IRA and there won't be a partition right there saying, we reject this contribution because you're not allowed. No, 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 you, you have to follow the rules. You can put the contribution in, but then if you aren't allowed to make that contribution, there's a 6% penalty every single year for that contribution. So if you made that contribution two years ago, and you didn't realize it, there's a 6% penalty that's applied to the past two years on the amount that you contributed. By the way, when you withdraw the money, I'll show you the three options you have, the growth on that is also taxable to you. So, so guys, this is, it's not an enormous penalty, but it will add up because it's a every single year sort of penalty. So, so that's the problem, okay? How do you, how do you prevent it? How do you know? Doing tax, or doing tax planning, doing comprehensive financial planning. When you're doing your taxes each and every year and it's connected, it's not just this event you do online, it's connected to your overall financial life where you're looking at, yeah, I, I made this Roth IRA contribution, blah, blah, blah. You're gonna be able to connect those dots and say, oh, oh, I'm, I'm not allowed to. Many people, don't put their Roth IRA contribution on their tax return because they think, well, I'm not getting a tax benefit. So I, I know I get the, I'll get this 5498 form, I'll get it out there in May, I'm doing my taxes earlier in the year, I'm not even gonna put my Roth IRA contribution on here. Technically my return can still go through even though it's not accurate. Guys, if you don't put that in and your adjusted gross income's above that level or you don't have earned income or enough earned income, it's gonna say, nope, you can't file this return you have made a, a Roth IRA contribution when you're not allowed. So doing that comprehensive planning work where you're looking at all six areas of your financial life with your CFP and they, they are aware, oh, you made a Roth IRA contribution, you're doing these other things, all right, now here's tax planning, oh, wait a second, your income actually was above these limits. They should know that in advance, but that, that process of comprehensive financial planning, they'll be able to catch that. And then how do you fix it? How do you fix it? Number one, you can just remove the excess contribution. There's a form for that, whichever institution you're using, there's a form to do that. If there's gain, then that gain will be taxable, like I mentioned. When do you have to do that? Up until your tax filing deadline, you even have all the way through extension. So if you're in the habit of getting your taxes done at the very last minute and you think you're gonna be close to these thresholds, I wouldn't, I would try and do it sooner. So just in case you've got time to, to withdraw the dollar. So that's the first option to, if you realize I made a Roth contribution and I shouldn't have, you can just remove it via, via a form. Um, second thing that you can do is you can, you can recharacterize. So if your income's above the threshold, and you can't do a Roth IRA, but you can do an IRA. You can do what's known as a backdoor Roth or, or an after-tax uh, IRA contribution. Then you can just say, hey, I made too much money. Turn this Roth IRA contribution into an IRA contribution. Move the dollars and the growth over to my IRA. So move this Roth IRA contribution over to my traditional IRA. That money over there will be after tax, so you'll potentially have to track your basis there, which you can do via Form 8606. If you look and you're like, 
yeah, I'm going to be above this threshold, this income threshold for a while. I, I just need to move these to my IRA. Then, then that's the form that you'll do that. That's the second option. But then the third is you can, you can kind of move those, uh, that Roth IRA contribution to the current year. To, to, to instead of taking it out and then putting it right back in, if it's just one year that you're not allowed, yeah, I had an income spike last year, it's not gonna happen again. You can move the contribution from the previous year to the current year, there's a form for that as well. So those are the times when you might want to contribute to a Roth IRA, you might be unaware of these rules and, and still be contributing, but those are the times you need to look out for and th that's how you fix it. Those are the three options that you have. You gotta be working with your CFP, doing comprehensive financial planning. You'll avoid this mistake and if you do have one sneak, sneak by the goalie, you'll, they'll be able to help you fix it as well. So work with your CFP on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's Corhorn with K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well. Or send us an email, info at corhorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.